Hey everybody and welcome back to Denzy Now here on Geek Carolina. I'm your host Mike from Electric City Sentai, Denzy Caster. And today folks we've got more Kamen Rider build and finally caught up. Um, or at least caught up as of the time I'm recording this. I'm sure that by the time it airs I will no longer be caught up, but hey. Uh, so alright, it means I've just got more Kamen Rider build to watch and that is always a good thing. Cause uh, I'm going to be sad when this one ends folks. So right now. Uh, of course, uh, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Either way is fine. Leave us a comment down below and uh, hit that red subscribe button. We greatly appreciate it. That helps us out a lot here at Geek Carolina. So on to the video. We're looking at uh, episodes 37 through 40 today. That is uh, The Ultimate Phase is episode 37, Mad World episode 38, the Unstoppable Genius, episode 39, and episode 40, The Final Revolution. Uh, so, uh, just to kind of give some real quick synopses out of these episodes uh, as stuff decides it will load for me. Um, so, the ultimate phase uh, winds up with us seeing the debut of the uh, Great Dragon uh, version of Cross Z. Uh, basically, if everything had worked the way it had gone to plan in uh, episode 36, then uh, Build and Evolt would have both went up in flames together. Unfortunately, it did not, and we wind up with a white-haired Sento possessed by Evolt, and we get stage 3, or phase 3, of Evolt's evolution. Um, Ultimately, it's a matter of how can we stop, uh, how can we stop Evolt and free Sento, and that becomes the the big question mark and plan, uh, especially when we find out we are down to two common riders. Um, because when Evolt left Bonjo's body, he took with him everything that allowed Bonjo to transform. He took all the cells, all the DNA. Uh, every part of himself out of Bonjo that allowed Bonjo to transform is gone. Um, until uh, Bonjo basically summons up the strength himself, which is a really cool thing. They, they leave it uh, very much up for debate and up for discussion whether or not uh, it is uh, trace elements of evil that he couldn't take out of Bonjo, or if it's really just Bonjo's force of will that allows him to transform. But we get um, the Great Dragon uh, full bottle when, uh, or I guess in this case it's called an Evil bottle, um, when he steals the Dragon uh, Evil bottle off of Evolt uh, and manages to use it himself and forces himself to transform into a version of Cross Zed Dragon that. Uh, has some of the maroon and goldish colorations that are part of um, uh, Kamen Rider Evolve's uh, color scheme. But uh, we had that in uh, episode 37. So when we move on to 38, which is Mad World, um, basically um, we get the transformation into phase 4, which is... Uh, basically the final phase of evil um at the end of episode 37 the three common riders uh combine their powers into a triple rider kick uh with cross zed once again being able to turn into cross zed magma uh check out our new overflowing magma t-shirt over at our red bubble store um but he is able to transform back into his magma form and along with grease and rogue together they triple rider kick uh, Common Rider Evil, and in the process generate enough power to uh, power the switch from Pandora's box that uh, will allow Evil to reach his complete form, uh, which allows him to uh, essentially jettison Sento. He no longer needs a human host. The problem is when he jettisons Sento, uh, it's not. Sento anymore. It's the demon scientist. He goes back to being Kasuragi uh, and remembers nothing of being Sento. Um, 
in this one. Uh, his body is complete. We have three incredibly strong riders that are absolutely no match for him. Um, and so how do we wind up finding a way to stop this form of, uh, of Evolt? And we get Kamen Rider Evolt's first actual on-screen transformation, the full reveal of the suit, as well as his, uh, uh, some of his attacks is the black hole form, they call it. Uh, I prefer to think it's just, it's the true form of Kamen Rider Evolt. It's that simple. Um, we also, in that episode, uh, see Utsumi try to come back to his senses a little bit and actually tries to come in and help. Um, he calls on the, the assistance of uh, Kamen Rider Rogue saying, look, I was, I was wrong. The, we botched this all to bejesus and back. Uh, he's he's taking over Sato. He's taking over Namba Heavy Industries. He being evil, um, and he wants the world. He wants to take over the planet, and somehow he has he has to be stopped. Um, and with this decision, uh, we wind up with Utsumi helping the writers, albeit briefly, and. With uh, the writers being absolutely no match for Evolt, Evolt teleports himself back to Namba Heavy Industries, kills Namba, uh, grabs the cane, comes back and tells Itsumi, okay, you have a choice. Uh, follow a dead man or follow me. And uh, this is the moment that Utsumi becomes completely unhinged, like he was stable before this. But here's where he goes straight off the deep end. Um, he's offered... An Evol driver by Evolt. We don't know how in the world there's two of them. Uh, um, in fact, a remark that Utsumi even makes in a subsequent episode here is there really should only be one of these. Um, but he offers one to him first and he turns it down. He walks away. Uh, but after being given the choice of you know, your loyalty or your life, uh, he shatters Namba's cane says there is no choice, I swear my loyalty to you, and he takes the evil driver uh, along with the bat and engine bottles and transforms into common writer Mad Rogue. Um, so essentially the evil doppelganger for all intent and purpose, the evil counterpart to common writer Rogue. Um, the Unstoppable Genius is episode 39. And in this one, um, we see a couple of things. One, we have seen Kasuragi in Sento's body, I guess, for one of well, with Sento's face, uh, attempting to wield the Kamen Rider powers. He's not able to do that. Uh, it just doesn't work. But uh, because the powers are are not tuned to him, they're tuned to Sento effectively. In the Unstoppable Genius, uh, he figures out how to do that. Uh, he figures out how to tune the, the powers to himself, and he develops a new uh, a new weapon that will allow him to take his own ultimate form and be a more than a match, not just for Evolt, but also for Banjo Ryuga, who, according to Kasuragi, probably has part of Evolt still in him. Uh, otherwise, he shouldn't be able to transform. Um, so... We have the, the battles rage on now between uh, Mad Rogue acting mostly as the general uh, for Evolt. We don't see Evolt take a whole lot of personal action at this point. Um, and we see the memories uh, of Katsuragi uh, really showing how different he was than Sento. And uh, by the end of the episode, we see... Uh, and this, this to me is how cool the series is. We actually see a scene, what looks like, if you watch the opening of the show, to be a throwaway, hey, that's a cool image thing of, of the actor who plays Kasuragi and the actor who plays Sento um, in uh, effectively a black room with formulas and whatnot on them, and they reach out, touch hands, and merge through one another with... Uh, Sento being the, the one that's left standing um, and Kasuragi fading away with a smile um, 
we actually get that moment in the show. And we have this moment where uh, Kasuragi basically, in order to save the day, he knows he can't do it alone. He knows he has to trust these people, these other writers, and he knows he does not have it in himself to do it on his own. So he surrenders his body back to Sento. And we wind up with sort of a very Firestorm-esque thing now, with Sento, even though Kasuragi's still in here, but with Sento as the, uh, the, the guy in the driver's seat of the body, so to speak. Uh, but we do get the... Uh, we get the on-screen sort of tail-end transformation of what well, I presume, given how late it is in the season, will be Build's ultimate form, which is Build Genius. Um, we'll talk about that. Um, then the final revolution is episode 40, where this has the full debut of Build Genius. Um, Kasuragi's memories were strong enough to bring back Sento, we find out that Sento does not have all of Kasuragi's memories, hence the fact that Kasuragi is still up there, too. Um, basically, Sento remembers everything up to high school uh, and getting out of high school, but once Pandora's box comes around and the sky walls go up, that's when his memory gets really, really fuzzy and where Kasuragi's memories and spirit sort of kick in. It's a really interesting dynamic, I think, but uh, we wind up with that... Uh, Kasuragi succeeded in creating the Genius Full Bottle, but it took Sento to use it. So we get that. Um, and then uh, throughout the episode, we find out sort of the final stages of Evolt's plan. Um, Evolt did not really expect to see um, Sento develop a weapon that could challenge him. So now, uh, by the time all is said and done at the end of episode 40, we know that Evolt is going to attempt to take over and destroy Earth. Uh, but in the way he's going to do it here is by effectively turning humanity, we go back to the beginning of the series. He's going to turn humanity into these uh, type of smashes that will sow so much fear and so much... Um, uh, distrust and whatnot, that humanity, his goal is to, to generate so much mistrust and so much fear that humanity collapses in on itself and basically destroys itself in short order and, and uh, spark paranoia and whatnot. And he's going to use what he refers to as the Lost Smash uh, to do that. And this is the ultimate evolution of the Smash. Um, to give an idea here... Um, and he, for the record, he actually turns two folks into Lost Smash, one of them being the former Prime Minister of Hokuto. Um, that would be Prime Minister Tajima, who has not been seen in the show since episode 22. So it's been like 18 episodes which, since we've seen this lady. Um, we haven't even had a mention of the Clone Smash since like episode uh, 36. So we've seen them, but it's been about four or five episodes since we've had any kind of look or mention of them. Um, and then uh, we wind up with um, them essentially exposing Greece to the same process. Uh, because one of the side effects of being a Lost Smash is you are exposed to so much nebula gas that uh, if you are defeated, you die. Uh, much like the Three Crows did earlier in the series. Uh, and now Greece has been exposed to that, although he finds a way to bypass it, and we'll talk about that briefly. So I'm not going to go too much into too many more story details than I already have because these episodes are still sort of fresh. Um, but we're going to talk about the likes and dislikes, and uh, some of the story things in here will, will creep up in that. Uh, I'm going to start with the things I like because one of the things I dislike may take a minute. Um... So, stuff I liked. I loved the way they brought back Ryuga and into the powers of uh, Cross Z. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, so much so that we designed the new t-shirt that's up over the store and I, I plan to have it. Um, so, look out in the coming weeks for a, a new t-shirt to, to show up uh, uh, here on the show. Uh, but it's already on the store. Go buy it. Uh, Overflowing Magma, again, is the name of that shirt. Uh, that design, but just the way they bring him back 
and the idea that he reclaims his writer powers through sheer force of will. Uh, they show him try to transform and he fails. They show him they show him figure out, wait a minute, that's a that dragon bottle is the one he used when he possessed me. So let me get the, the dragon evolve bottle off of, of Evolt and see if I can use it. And initially he uses it like he did the dragon bottle early in the series. Um, and it initially doesn't work, but the more he uses it, the the harder he actually manages to hit Evolt and he actually manages to hurt him untransformed and uh, without without turning into Kamen Rider in his civilian form he manages to hurt him um, the same way he was raising his hazard level before and now he's able to eventually transform into a great dragon version of Cross Z um, and then uh, once again back into Cross Z Magma which is my favorite design on this entire show. Um, so I really love that. They, Ryuga is far and away at this point my favorite character. Um, the way that they have Evil being carried off as very much the main bad guy, uh, I like. I very much appreciate the idea that he was facing the writers head on as long as he needed to. But once he no longer needed to, he does step back and and start throwing pawns and whatnot at the writers. That that's actually a really intriguing way of handling it to me within the confines of the show because you you generally see the big bad throw stuff at the bad throw stuff at the good guys and it's monster of the week monster of the week monster of the week and we've had very little monster of the week in uh, build just pure and simple very very little monster of the week action which I appreciate because it's different than most common writer shows, but uh, in most toku in general. But here, uh, once he has gotten what he needs out of the writers, which is he was, he was having to put himself in harm's way to face the writers in hopes of getting his full powers back. But once he did, he can take a step back. From a villain standpoint, you know, it's kind of cool. Uh, I, I can see the argument of, well, why is he taking a step back? Because he's outclassing the writers so much that he could very easily just kill them all. And maybe he could. But um, he wouldn't be the interesting megalomaniac villain if he did that. So I love Evolt so far as the bad guy. Um, I actually appreciate in one of these shows where they're willing to show that the bad guys will kill somebody. Uh, we see him kill Nambo. We've seen him kill... Uh, he's basically at this point killed three prime ministers. Uh, so he's killed off three heads of state in the series um, and uh, been responsible after a fashion for the crows getting killed and helped manipulate. I mean, you can argue he's manipulated the events since the beginning of the series. Which, again, I really appreciate. I think that's cool that they've handled him that way. Um, I like the idea that he's not uh, he's not stuck to uh, a form anymore. He doesn't have to possess someone. He's actually so strong he can just manifest his own physical form. It gives you an idea of how strong he's supposed to be in the series now. Because up to this point, the only way he could manifest himself physically was to possess a human body. Now he no longer needs to do that. I think that speaks very highly, too. Um, they show Ryuga, after he takes the Dragon Evil bottle, that he is remembering things that Evolt has done in the past. Um, and, for instance, when he sees Evolt in what uh, is officially the black hole form of Evolt, when he sees Evolt's true form, he immediately knows that that is Evolt's final form. He knows what he's looking at. Um, so I appreciate that, and it kind of lends credence to the idea of maybe there's a little bit of a vault left in, uh, in bon uh, Ryuga Banjo. So I appreciated that. Um, I like the way they're treating a lot of the characters at this point. There's two in particular that I'm kind of, eh, but we're going to get there. Um, I also love the dynamic between Kasuragi and Sento and what they have turned into a very... Um, into a very Firestorm-like relationship. The 
idea, uh, the way they handled a lot of this, they would have the actor who played Katsuragi in Sento's wardrobe at points doing the, actually performing, uh, even though it's, he doesn't look like Katsuragi anymore, and Katsuragi is not the person that's really there. Um, but they're doing that more to show that in that moment, as he's saying those words, that he's more Kasuragi than Sento. That this is something that you is so different than what would come out of Sento's mouth that we have we can't actually let it come out of Sento's mouth. That's the way I took it um, as an intention from the writers, which is just really intelligent when you stop to think about it. it was, no, this is something that's so far against what Sento would say or do um, in any extreme, possessed or not, that we don't want, we actually don't want Sento, we don't want the face saying that line. Um, so I appreciated that, and as it turns into this firestorm relationship, I like that a lot too. Stuff I'm not caring for. Um, uh, I don't know why, but they have suddenly decided that Rogue is kind of a jokish character. Um, he spent most of the last couple episodes in really goofy wardrobe with the girls kind of saying, no, you look hideous, and trying to compromise on what he's going to wear. I don't get that, uh, genuinely. I, I, I get that it's a joke, but it's so far away from anything with Gintoku that um, it's a little it's it's a little f too far too far afield for my taste. Uh, it actually bounced me out a little bit, which has really very rarely if ever happened with this show. I could have done without those scenes entirely. They could have left those on the cutting room floor. Um, I wouldn't have cared if the if the digital file had spontaneously burst and went up in flames. Uh, at least for those scenes, because they were terrible. Uh, like I said, I get that it's a joke, and there are characters in the... I think the part that bothers me is there are characters in the show you could do it with. Arguably, you could do it with Grease, because Grease has such an affinity for uh, Misora that it would actually make sense that he's doing that trying to impress her. It makes zero sense with Gintoku. Um, unless you want to say that the guy's having a mental breakdown and going through a midlife crisis. Which they very well might, to be perfectly honest, because they love dropping hints first. So maybe they're dropping a hint that he's just gone off the deep end. Um, of course, it's not much of a hint. It's more like they hit you over the head with a hammer. Um, I do not like uh, some of the, the visuals that we're getting in the show now because when they make reference to somebody being, uh, you're acting like a monkey or you're doing this or et cetera, et cetera, and, uh, like a cartoon monkey bops on the head and stuff. Uh, for a show that is that has such a serious tone and story, doing goofy over-the-top things of that nature are, are to me, are way out of place. Um, finally, on the dislike list, I do not like the look of Build Genius. I think it's hideous. Uh, I think it's hideous even by common writer standards. And, and the reason I phrase it that way is because calling it the way it is. It is very rare for Common Rider to have an ultimate form for a writer that looks, at least for my taste, looks as good as the base form. It's very, very rare. Um, it happens on occasion. I thought the ultimate form of Gaim uh, Kachidoki Arms, I think is what it was. Or no, Kiwami Arms. I thought Kiwami Arms looked really, really good. And almost as good as Gaim's base form. Granted, they went a little cheap with it and repainted parts of other costumes to do it, but then again, when you got like 13 writers in one show, sometimes you gotta save money. But I thought that form looked really, really awesome. Um, I thought that um, for the most part, for the most part, um, he says, um, I thought, um, that Double's final form was all right. Um, uh, Cyclone Joker Extreme. 
Uh, I thought Tajador, which is the ultimate form of O's, is absolutely fantastic. That's actually probably the best design in the show. But for every one of those you get, then you also wind up with uh, like a decade complete or um, or drives final form, the Triteron form, which uh, the helmet looks horrible, or um, or formula, which looks worse to me. Sorry, Joe. Um, and and then you also wind up with this, which. Um, I, I, it's like cosmic states to me. You see what they're going for. They're, they're wanting you to get the image that this is build being powered by the power of all 60 full bottles, uh, at the same time. Like it's, it's him with the power of all the bottles and sort of an answer to the Pandora box kind of thing. And I get that. And that comes across in the design. And I get why it's white uh, on multiple levels, actually. It's white uh, because it's you have so much color from all the different full, full bottles that they wanted those colors to be accent. I get that. Um, it's an ultimate form that he's in control of, unlike uh, Hazard, which is black. So I get that. Uh, and he's a scientist. And if you look, both his and Mad Rogue, who is the other scientist, uh, and Evol, who is dependent upon the powers of science, all of their armors are white in their ultimate forms. Like a scientist lab coat. So I get that. It's hideous. I, I No, it's the worst looking rider costume in the show. I actually like Mad Rogue's armor a good bit. It's uh, fairly simple, looks fairly clean. Interesting to see a bat armor in white, but hey, I'll I'll go with you on it. So I actually don't mind that one, and I like the idea that his Evolve Driver it allows him to summon weapons based off the other full bottles. I think that's a cool concept. Um, but Build Genius is that's rough, very rough. Um, things I'm looking forward to. Just more dry, uh, more build. I always look forward to more build because build is a tremendous show. The story is continuing to get better and better. Um, there are questions to be asked. What is going to be Gintoku's uh, role in the world? Uh, what is that going to turn into? What is it going to look like? That thought intrigues me. What are we going to get with, uh, with uh, Soichi when he returns and eventually regains consciousness? I hope that happens before the finale. I really, really do, because um, I feel like they could use him to fill in some holes, which I think would be really, uh, really nice. I also will throw this into, I'm, I forgot to mention this with my likes, but I'm going to throw it in here. I'm loving the camaraderie between all the secondary writers. Build often comes off as a very aloof character by, by virtue of being the scientist, but um, you have what I think will be the most epic bromance in the history of Common Rider between uh, Rogue and Grease, if they let it go the way it's going. Um, but you already have just tight-knit relationships between these characters, all the way down to uh, since the Sklosh Driver has been destroyed, the one used by uh, Ryuga, he takes the Dragon Jelly, uh, which is the the power source, the bottle device for his old Sklosh driver, he takes that, which somehow survived, albeit damaged, and gives it to Grease so that Grease can use it. Uh, and so now even Grease has a somewhat powered up form where he uses Bonjo's uh, Sklosh driver device in order to summon a second breaker weapon, the sort of forearm shield and spike, and now he has two of them. Um, and it even appears that that's the way he staves off his destruction after he is defeated um, in, uh, after he is exposed to the nebula gas. But all things considered, bunch of, really good bunch of episodes. Really looking forward to more of it. Um, I, I imagine they've probably got maybe another eight episodes left. 48 seems to be the average uh, head count for one of these shows. So 
I'm assuming they've probably got another eight episodes or so left. Could be less. Doubt it's going to be more. But, hey, if it's more, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, folks, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our uh, talk this week about Kamen Rider Build. Let us know what you think of Kamen Rider Build as it's progressing. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. If you liked the video, like I said at the beginning, give us the thumbs up. If you didn't, give it the thumbs down. That's fine either way. Just let us know why in the comments. That's all we ask. And, of course, feel free to help us out here at Geek Carolina by, one, the easiest one in the world to do, hit that subscribe button. But also check us out on all of our social media outlets, follow us, like us, etc. Share and like the video uh, everywhere you can that you would like. Let uh, Share with your friends, message boards, what have you. Feel free to do that. And you can also pick up some cool t-shirts over at our stores at cafepress.com slash geekcarolina and redbubble.com slash people slash geekcarolina. The addresses are down below where you can pick up cool shirts like the one I'm wearing and like our new overflowing magma shirt for uh, one of the most epic secondary writers in all of Common Writer history. So, folks, until next time, I'm Mike. We'll see you around on Denver Now.